This is a little pill that you need to flip. You can see right here, street track. There we go, and I can see it. You gotta take these two off, you gotta flip this around, but the easiest way to do that, take these two off, that's the T50, that's the... What's going on everyone, Todd from Plat AF, and on this video, I'm gonna show you the time, how long it takes to swap the unplugged performance front upper control arms from track setting back to street setting. So I just got back from a track out at Utah Motorsports Campus. I did not have these wheels and tires on. These are signature wheels. I had another set of signature wheels, so shout out to Jamie over at Signature Wheel. If you need wheels, he will hook you up. Also tires as well. Just for fun, I'm sitting at negative three degrees of camber. You can see how much it tucks in there right now because I usually run on the track 305, 3520s, and these are 265, 35, 21. And you can see that with the negative three degrees of camber setting, which is the track setting for two reasons. One, to have better handling, more contact patch of that 305 going around the track. And also two, it's the only way you can fit 305s in the front is you have to have negative camber to clear in here. But you can see how much of a space there is, how much of a difference in the width there was before. Because before with the 305s, it's pretty flush. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna time how long it takes to flip this around and I'm gonna show you the process. So if you have unplugged performance, front upper control arms, and you wanted to track your car, and I'm not talking about drag strip, I'm talking about road course track. This is something I would highly recommend. They work awesome. It goes together pretty quickly. You go get it aligned on the street setting, and then you switch it to the track setting. And I think it probably takes about 20 minutes, maybe a little bit longer. I'm gonna time it and we're gonna see. I also have the rear unplugged. You can't really see it here, but it's all the, all the rear suspension, the five link rear suspension is all swapped out as well. And then of course we have the carbon ceramic unplugged front brakes, which are a must if you're gonna track this thing. It stops impressively well. Make sure you do some rear brake upgrades at the same time. Do not run stock brake pads. Get more aggressive stock brake pads at the very least. If you wanna go out, you can get carbon ceramic rears. I put steel slotted rears on right now and some pretty aggressive rear pads. So they squeak a little bit on the street, but they stop really, really well when you're going faster on the track over and over and over again. Zero brake fade. The thing that stops me from being able to do multiple laps, honestly, the battery starts to get hot. I can do about 10, 12 minutes all out on the track. Battery starts getting hot, starts cutting power down a little bit. So I come off the track, hang out for like a minute. I keep it moving so the brakes you know, can get some airflow through there. Still waiting on the unplugged vented front brake. So the whole venting system, I can't remember what it's called, but I'm still waiting on that. That should be out soon. I'll be running that. That should help a ton, but the rear brakes get pretty hot too. When the battery heats up and you come off the track, literally just a minute or two off the track is enough for it to cool down, to jump back on the track, return to full power and have several more laps. The brakes are not the thing that stop the fun on a road course. It's the battery just gets hot. With that said, I'm going to start the timer. I have all the tools here. Let me just review the tools real quick. You'll see me using them, but this will help just so you know what you need. So we're going to have for this spindle thing, I think that's what it's called. We'll see if I call these right thing. You need a 15 millimeter and then a Torx T50. For the pill, you need a six millimeter. And then for the tow rod, because you have to actually change the tow setting. And I'll explain that, it's very basic, very easy. You need a 21, 24, and a 14. And then this is just to pull my front wheels off, because you gotta pull the wheels off to do this. I have a little impact, and this will speed up the process. So we'll start the timer and we'll get rolling. Okay, so first thing, I put these little pucks under here. If you never jacked up your car, you need these little pucks. And you still can't fit the jack under this because it's too low. I'm gonna raise the suspension up least to high. So let the suspension go up. So you can see it's lifting. It says safety restraint system fault because I have this Model 3 steering wheel in. Obviously no airbags, so the stock airbags unplugged and that's what gives that. The air pressure in tires is very low is because I swapped tires and it hasn't synced up to the, the new TPMS sensor yet. A couple things you gotta do. You gotta go to service, jack mode. Let's put the brake on, push that. If not, it'll screw things up. I learned that the hard way. Pop the hood, the frunk, so we'll leave this one off. Last thing you gotta do, go to the app and go to security and turn sentry mode off. Because if you leave sentry mode on, you'll set the alarm off. And start.
This is the little pill that you need to flip. You can see right here, it says street track. So you take these two off, you gotta flip this around, but the easiest way to do that, take these two off, that's the T50, that's the 15. You pull that off, you support this with the jack because it's gonna drop and put a lot of pressure on this guy. Turn it around, boop, flop it back in. You have to turn that 360 degrees. So here's how this works. When you camber in more negative, what it does is it pushes the toe out you need to pull the toe in. You turn it 360 degrees to, so it shortens that. When you do the opposite, when you camber back out, you have to bring the toe out now 360 degrees. I mark this with a paint marker, and uh, when I turn it, I just watch that turn 360 degrees, and then I tighten it back down. Granted, this is gonna take a little bit longer because I'm doing a little bit of an explanation, but not much. We're at two minutes and 30 seconds. So this is the T50 and the 15. So that's out, all right? And take this top little pill off with the two Allens. And you don't really need to pull these plastics off, so I don't. Take these two little Allens out, gentle little tap. And then you just take this little pill and you rotate it this way. Throw it back in there, the two Allens. But now that that pill is rotated to the street setting instead of the track setting, this is gonna bring the camber out two degrees. I'm gonna tighten this while I'm up here. I always learn tight is tight. Too tight's broken. Sometimes this part is nice and smooth. Popping this back in here, sometimes it is a nightmare. With the jack under there, it really helps. And you don't wanna push too hard, so it's easy. You don't wanna push too hard, because it'll compress that little seal in, and it doesn't like that. We're gonna tighten on the nut side and just hold it on the T50 side. Seven minutes. Still need to adjust the toe rod. This is probably the thing that takes the longest. It's not that hard, but if anything is the most tedious part, it's probably this. So first, now all I need to do is loosen this nut. Okay. I'm gonna go longer. That's where we take this little 14, and that fits on this guy right here. This nut is marked, so I can watch my marking on there. And that nut has enough friction that it will turn as I turn this. So to lengthen it, we have to go counterclockwise. That was that green mark, right? So I went 360, and then go back in, tighten it in. So I went 360 degrees. See how this moves either side? I like to set it back as neutral as possible before I'm done here as well. Nice and neutral. One side is done. It's taken 11 minutes so far. On to side number two. We'll just keep going. Let's see how long this takes now. Put it all together. Now if you think, hey, why don't you just pull the pill out, rotate it, and push it back in, very hard to line up, much easier to pull this little spindle thing out, this one. I've tried, it's way faster this way. There, put a little pressure on there, tension back off that cable. Here's the pill, rotate it out. Wrench sizes that we need. 14, 21, 24. This angle I'm doing is trying to keep it so you can see on the camera. The camber came in towing out. We had to shorten it. Now we have to lengthen it. Twenty-four minutes so far. I'm going kind of slow. That's it, start to finish, we'll say 25 minutes. So without the explanation, it would have been a little quicker. But 25 minute job, start to finish. Again, when you 
camber in for racetrack, it sets the toe out so you gotta shorten it and bring it in. And when you go back to street setting, you have to lengthen that, that toe rod, so counterclockwise rotation to lengthen it. 360 degrees, one rotation. Todd from Plat AF. If you haven't already, like, subscribe, comment below. Got lots more videos coming soon. I know it's been a while since we put videos out, but we got a lot coming soon. Lots of video footage. I'm gonna introduce you to a guy that is gonna help us with a lot of the video editing. So I'm gonna take him for a ride. He's a car enthusiast. You'll see him soon. He's editing this video right now. His name's Illy. Say hi, Illy. Anyway, over and out. See you in the next one.